the OH-58 Kiowa Warrior. On my last video, I talked about the MI-8 helicopter, and I did not include its history because I assumed that everyone knew about it. This helicopter, on the other hand, is not really that known, at least as much as the MI-8 or the Apaches. Doesn't matter for right or wrong reasons, this helicopter is in the game right now, so we're going to ask this question, like always. How do we play this thing in War Thunder, and is it really worth it? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Dickinson and welcome back to another War Thunder review. Today, we will be reviewing the OH-58D Kiowa Warrior, a vehicle that recently joined the American and Chinese fleet of helicopters. We all already know how the story of most of the aircrafts in the United States goes. One military branch requests a vehicle from aircraft manufacturers, the designers give it their best shot and all options are on the table. This time it was US Navy, on behalf of US Army, requesting for a light observation helicopter. The request was sent to 25 helicopter manufacturers, which 12 of them showed up. One of them was Bell D-250. Other models such as Fairchild Hiller FH-1100 and Hughes Model 369. Later they received their own designation respectively. Eventually the Hughes YOH-6 was chosen over the Bell's and Fairchild Hiller's design. After their loss in the competition, Bell went about solving the problem of marketing the aircraft and its design in general. After some modifications, you have the Bell 206A Jet Ranger. Seven years later, after the OH-6 serving in the Vietnam War, the Army reopened the LOH competition for bits because Hughes Aircraft Division could not meet the production demands of the contract. In the end, Bell underbid Hughes to win the contract and Bell 206A was designated as the OH-58A, following the Army's new designations. It was also received the name Kiowa in the honor of the Native American tribe. Several years later, the US Army is about to replace the AH-1 Cobra with a new helicopter with brand new computerized technologies. Foreshadowing, that's the AH-64. Logically, they wanted the same thing for their scout helicopters as well, with night vision and improved navigation systems, long-range stabilized mass-mounted optical subsystem for the observer, and etc. Later years, they decided to give it the ability to strike as well, but this time the army decided to look for the commercial helicopters, more specifically, the Bell 206 and Hughes OH-6. And the old competitors were back at it again. The Bell and Hughes redesigned their scout helicopters to enter the contract. The Bell gave the improved OH-58, called Model 406, and Hughes offered the improved version of the OH-6. Several test flights later, and the OH-58D Kiowa Warrior was born. It was also exported to other countries such as Australia, Iraq, Taiwan, etc. As of this video's production, we have two nations that use Kiowa Warriors in War Thunder, the United States and Taiwan. The most major differences between them are in their armaments. Other than that, let's get on with the armors and modules. Welcome to the Armor and Modular Protection Analysis, where we basically analyze the armors and modules inside of a vehicle. Today's helicopters are the Chinese and American OH-58D Kiowa Warriors. As always, the first thing that we need to take a look at is the crew. This helicopter has a pilot and a co-pilot. The crew has CCIP on all of its weapons, including rockets and its various cannons and machine guns. It has night vision and thermal sights, both TV and FLIR with decent zoom and an IRSD auto tracker, a laser warning receiver, a laser designator, 41 countermeasures such as chaff, flare, IRCM included. With a placeholder cockpit with three MFDs being able to show aircraft digital avionics, TV and flare camera, GPS, and a dedicated RWR screen. As of now, unfortunately, the helicopter has no scouting ability. Hopefully, we will see one in the future. It has one self-sealing fuel tank with these fuel presets. The OH-58D Kiowa Warrior has an Allison 250C30 engine. Just like its predecessor engine, the C-20B version, this one also stalls frequently if you're not careful. Any extreme or rapid reaction towards the collective pitch makes your helicopter stall its engine, so be careful with your maneuvers and manage your throttle. And even with maximum fuel and the heaviest armament, which in this case the APKWS-2 M282 rockets, this thing will still maneuver pretty well. Yeah, sure, you could stall your engines more the heavier you go, but 
this is not as bad as the H6M, where carrying two big hydro rocket pods and a full fuel load would make this thing a challenging helicopter to fly. I will talk about its mobility a bit later into this video. At the end, you have three oil cooling systems, traction of the control surfaces, and of course, prop shafts. Fun fact, during the development of the US Army's Kiowa Warrior, they breached the fourth dimension of knowledge and used a special spiritual force to power the main blades. We can even see this in the game as well, and it's called Gaijin, how the hell did you mess up the x-ray on this thing? And for now, let's talk about the armaments that it carries. The first armament you will see is the 2.75 inch hydro rockets. Comparing it to the AH-6M, you still have the same amount. However, you lost the ability to use both machine guns while using the 7 pod variants. And that's all the Kiowa Warrior has. 14 unguided rockets compared to 38 rockets the Little Bird had. So armament wise, you got a little bit worse. The Hydro Rockets are pretty nice, but they're at a low quantity on this helicopter. They have good amount of penetration and explosive mass, and they're the best thing the US helicopters have to offer regarding rockets. Although, I wish that wasn't the case. Next up we have the APKWS-2s, both M282 and M151 variants, and it looks like both of them got new names, the AGR-20A and AGR-20B. The A model is a high explosive hydro with low penetration of 80mm, while the B model is a semi-armor piercing high explosive hydra with the improved penetration of 41mm and half of the explosive mass. Now to me, these guys might be useful when you engage in low armor targets like trucks or SPAAs, but to be honest, you already got two stock Hellfire, so unless you want to go for the quantity, yeah, sure you can mount those as well. And speaking of Hellfires, you have the AGM-114 Kilo Hellfire 2 missiles. Two installed on each pod, giving you four Hellfires total. After the huge missile nerf, the Hellfires were one of those that were, well, to my experience, unchanged a little bit, but still having a new smoke effect. The penetration is really amazing, and with the really nice explosive mass and the range that it has, it makes it a very good armament to carry. Although, you have to remember that this missile is a top attack one. Sure, you can fire a lot of them at the same time, but they're still problematic with smokes and bushes. The next armament is the AIM-92 Stingers, or ATAS, two installed on each pylon. Now, these air to air missiles were absolutely trash for a while, but then Gaijin decided to give this missile some love. By the way, remember the AIM-9M being the most unflarable missile in the game during the dev server? Yeah, it had the same flare resistance as the AIM-92 Stingers. So that gives you an idea on how flare resistant it actually is. But flare resistance does not matter if the missile cannot turn enough or the proxy fuse is not working. This air terror missile will be useful to you in heli PVE, which I'll talk about it later. Now let's get on with the cannons. These are the most major differences between the Taiwanese and the American Kiowa Warriors. The first one being the 7.62mm M134 machine guns, the 12.7mm GAU-19, and most importantly, the LR-30 cannon pod. All of them installed on the left pylon of the aircraft. Please note that the Taiwanese version of the Kiowa Warrior only has the 12.7mm machine gun, and it does not have the 7.62 nor the 30mm cannon. Now I have to say, the first time I saw the LR-30 cannon working was on Tim's Variety's YouTube channel. By the way, if you haven't subbed to him, absolutely do, he does incredible reviews and I absolutely love it. And I had absolutely no idea what this cannon was, until I heard this. So, I don't know, maybe when the patch goes live we'll, we'll at least know... So it does not have any tracers, it, it has no belt selection and it, it's a 30mm cannon as well. Sounds familiar to me. What's on the ammo belt? Um, but check out this recoil. I think this is pretty fun. Yep, that's the Bushmaster. Now, the LR-30 is a totally different redesign of the Aden 30mm cannon. Not only it can fire the belts that the Defa and Adens have, but also it can fire the same rounds as the Bushmaster as well. The Bushmaster can also do the same thing and fire the same ammo belts too, so I would like to call this one the Cousin Bushmaster. Other than that, this cannon is fairly nice, it does decent penetration and it does critical damage, however, the recoil is absolutely crazy, with one side of the helicopter moving to the other side. It takes some time to learn the recoil, but hey, at least you have CCIP to where to fire, so that's an incredible thing to have. Now let's get on with the mobility. 
When it comes to the mobility of this helicopter, I have to say it is pretty decent. This helicopter is really maneuverable, and I was even more surprised to see this helicopter having the same weight as the AH-6M. The engines might have the same output, but this time it is indeed better. Every time you take off, you don't need to fight with the collective pitch that much, at least not as much as the AH-6M. I assume that this was a result of an improved engine, plus the better transmission and bigger blades, but this time in at least heli PVE and arcade difficulty, this thing is pretty impressive. And what was more funny to me was how responsive this helicopter was while I was playing it in realistic controls. The pitch controls is nice, the yaw control is pretty responsive, and the roll rate is fairly nice. Just remember one thing, if you ever get into a vortex ring with this, it is pretty damn hard to recover, unlike other light helicopters such as Z19E. And your engine is not going to have a good time with it as well, so do the standard procedures to recover from a vortex ring. One of them is the Vauchard recovery, which I'm not sure if it's going to actually work, but I, I tried it and it worked, kinda. Yeah, that it works for me, so be careful about that. Hi everyone, so post-editing Bob Dickinson here, and uh, I almost forgot about this thing, but apparently the Kiowa Warrior actually has its optics and the laser guidance system mounted on its mast, meaning that it can actually go behind a hill and use the hellfires and still track the hellfire behind the hill. That is something that is really important. Hmm. I wonder if Gaijin actually modeled that thing. Well, I'm pretty damn disappointed in that guy, Jin. Come on, model it properly at least. Now let's get on with the game modes. When it comes to ground RB, I'm not a guy who plays a lot of it that much. However, I managed to perform pretty decently with the Stinger missiles, and you have also Hellfires to make it work as well. Rocket rushing does not work for me at all, since this helicopter does not even have enough rockets to begin with. And as of this video's production, we still don't have a mechanic to spot the enemy or friendly ground units. So I guess I'm gonna wait for that for a while. Now I have to say, in ground RB the BR of this thing is pretty damn low, and when you have the AGM-114Ks on your goddamn helicopter at that low BR, yeah, things get a little bit fishy for the enemy. It's a nice helicopter to use in ground RB, but nah, the, I, I just don't play ground RB that much to be honest. And when it comes to heli PVE, to me at least, it gets even worse. In Heli PvE, you have several objectives to do. The first one is destroying the enemy bases. Destroying enemy bases is easy, however, it takes a lot of time regarding the amount of damage you do. You still got four Hellfires and you can destroy Rollins fairly easily, but on the other hand, you really can't do enough damage to the bases either, so I won't be recommending it that much, unless you're helping a teammate that struggles with the Rollins. Destroying enemy assaults and defenses are something you can also do, but Here's a problem. You need to either select all AGM-20 pods or have one AGM-20 with two Hellfires in order to get all the SBAs or devouring all the anti-tank guns. You can also choose to pick rockets or cannons, but by the time you reach the battlefield, your teammates like K-50s or Apaches ate the whole battlefield anyways. Destroying enemy convoys is something you can also do. Your Hellfires are capable to get all the SBAs of the convoys, and they shouldn't be more than four SBAs. I hope. Landing and capturing the base is something you can also do. I mean, the top speed is not the best, but the heli is maneuverable enough to make it work. Destroying the enemy bombers and attackers is one of the things I had fun time playing. I fired the Stingers from more than 2 kilometers of range and gave it enough space to do its job. And it was pretty damn good as well, it functioned pretty nicely. Overall, in heli PvE, yeah, you, you can make it work if you want to. Welcome to the final verdict. In this section of the video, I'm going to talk about the grind of vehicles in different tech trees. Let's start with the American Kiowa Warrior. Now, let me ask you a question. Is it really worth grinding the Kiowa over the AH-64 or the AH-1Z or hell, even the AH-6M? For me as a person who loves helicopters, specifically the iconic ones, I would absolutely grind it. But for the average player who wants to grind a Hellfire Carrier with low BR for US tech tree, nah. 
I, I guess it's worth it. And comparing it to the Little Bird, you have better mobility, but you have somehow worse armaments. Sure, you can carry this Stingers and Bushmaster's cousin, but you lose both mini gun pods and the 38 Hydra rockets. Of course, you get the countermeasures and better optics, but there has to be a gimmick to these helicopters. You see, every helicopter tree has its own special thing. K-52 being a tanky helicopter with coaxial rotor, the Mi-28 being the Soviet attempt at making an Apache, the Z-10 being a very nice anti-air helicopter, and the German UHD Tiger having a Pars 3 LR missiles with the optics on top and etc. The OH-58 or at least the AH-6M have limited armaments, and in exchange they must have some sort of scouting mechanic to it as well. You know, there's a reason why there's an OH in its name. It's an observation helicopter. Its function was for scouting. So if a scouting mechanic come to this helicopter, I will definitely make a video on it. But for now, you can get it if you really want to, but for an inexperienced player, nah. Now let's have a look at the Taiwanese Kiowa Warrior. If you want to have a quick and fast way towards the Hellfires, yeah, sure thing, why not? I mean, the grinding route is not even that long either. But remember, you're still missing out on the TY-90s that the Chinese helicopters have, so it depends on your choice. I mean, who knows, maybe we might as well have the Taiwanese A-64E in the future as well. So sure, you can get the Chinese version of it as well if you want to. The OH-58 Kiowa was a rough experience for me in Heli PVE. The limited armaments made it a bad experience, but when I used it properly with the APK WS2s and Stingers, I had a very fun time. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, after this video, I'm just gonna go over and work on my Discord server with one of our dear viewers, so yeah, I'm, I might be a little bit busy for a while. If you like this video, you can join my YouTube membership or like the video or subscribe to my channel. This is me, Bob Dickinson, and thank you for watching.